Hello and welcome to Wednesday's geography session. So today we are carrying on our work with mountains, but we are specifically looking at mountains just here in the UK today. And um, some of you may know lots of mountains in the UK, some of you might not have even known there were mountains here, but we're going to have a look at those today. So as a little recap, which was the same as the recap on our last geography session, can you remember and name the four different types of mountains? So pause the video and have a go at this and then come back for the answers. Okay, so you hopefully would have remembered that we have fold mountains, which is when the tectonic plates uh, put, collide together to push up. We've got the dome mountains with the layer of um, the magma um, causing a rise in the Earth's crust, creating that dome shape. We've got volcanoes that are also known as fire mountains, which um, is where the tectonic plates move apart to make a volcano. But it's where the volcano continuously erupts and the magma solidifies on the outside to build up, build up layers to uh, make it mountainous. And fault block mountains, which is where the tectonic plates push together, but as they push together, they crumble and crack. Um, so you get a mountain with sort of um, cracked lines um, going up it. So that's a fault block mountain. So hopefully you remembered all different types of them. So, here we have got a map of the UK. Now, what I want you to have a think about is, do you know where any mountains in the UK are? So, have a look at the map, pause the video and see if you know of any mountains and if you can find their location on the map. Don't worry if you don't know, but if you do, have a go at trying to find them on the map. Okay, now I'm not going to give you the answers because that's what we're going to be looking at today. So hopefully, if you knew of some mountains or you know of some mountain names in the UK, hopefully you're a little bit sure on where roughly they are on the map. So this is also a map of the UK. And it has got some colours um, to show us some different things. So what do you think the colours show us? So we've got a little bar, a key. So it starts on green and it goes all the way up to white. And if you can have a look, you can see the different shades of different colours. So what I want you to do is have a think. What do you think these colours tell us? And they've got some numbers next to them to give you a clue. And have a think about it. Maybe have a pause and then unpause when you think you've worked it out. So these colours and the numbers um, tell us how high the ground is on different um, parts of the UK. So the M there stands for metres. So if you can see the dark green is 0 to 50 metres. So it's pretty flat, maybe got some bumpy hills, but it's pretty flat. And if you can have a look, most of the map has got lots of green on it. Then the further up the scale, the key we go, the higher the ground gets. So if we look here all the way at the top where it is white, that means that the um, highest area of the ground, so it's 1,400 metres, um, then the flat ground. Okay, so if, they, if you were to get a measuring stick and measure it, that's how high it is. So obviously we go from green is the flattest part of the land, white is the highest part, so the highest peak is what it's called, a peak. So having a look, some of these colours you might not be able to spot on the map, but whereabouts do you think the highest area of ground is using this colour code? So green is the lowest, then we've got this um, pale yellowy, a brown, and then it goes into a sort of purpley brown to a white. So pause the video and have a look. Okay, so have a think, what did you spot? There's lots of brown. Around here we've got some light brown. If you look really closely, we have actually got some white over here on this part of the map. I'm not going to tell you what part of the map this is because we're going to use our 
um, map skills. But we've got a little bit of white if you looked really, really closely. And it's surrounded by a lot of brown. So the highest areas of the ground in the UK are probably over here. Now, which countries of the UK do you think the high ground is um, located in? So we've got Scotland, we've got Wales. What other countries are there within the UK? So think about those. And so where do you think the highest, highest peak in the UK might be? So thinking about um, where you can see those spots of brown and white where do you think it's going to be so what we're going to do is we're going to use maps and we're going to use color codes to help us with our mountain work today now when you look at a map um land height is shown as different things so if you have a look at a map in an atlas um you can locate mountains really easily because mountains are usually shown on a map by a, a triangle symbol and the numbers around it show the height of a land okay so if you were to look at a map um maps don't look like this and we're going to explain why but if it did if it was a simple map you'd have the triangle um which is where the top the peak of the mountain is and then the numbers around it um is how high it is so if you were Coming up to here, you'd be 40 um, metres off the ground. Up here, 250. Right at the top at the peak is 320. Now, hopefully, we've seen a map before. And you don't see 3D objects like this on a map. So, if we were to be looking at a map um, representation, it would have to be flat. And if you can see here, it's not quite as easy. It's not very clear um, what those numbers mean because it has to be flat. It can't be um 3d like this one because that's not how we view maps it would be very confusing it wouldn't be accurate but having a look at this it's really unclear isn't it what number goes where is am i going to get to 60 before i get to 40 that's why it's unclear so that is why maps use the color coding that we just looked at with the browns and the whites because instead of having all these weird numbers just spread out all over the place they use colour codes to show how steep the hill is or how steep the mountain is. So if you have a look, so this is the exact same uh, mountain. So this is the, the 3D, not mountain, sorry, the hill. So this is the 3D version like this, but it's colour coded instead. So we know the green parts are the lowest. And then all the way up, we've got the pinky purpley part is the peak. Okay. Now you can see that very clearly in the 3D version. You can also see the numbers clearly in the 3D version. But like I said, we, when we're looking, looking at maps, we can't have 3D versions of things. But if you look at this um, flatter version of it, so the same here as this one, as this one, but we've got the colour codes. It's a lot easier to see where the peak of the mountain is and where the other layers are. So this is why colour coding is used on a map. So you can see really easily where the highest point is, where the lowest point is on a flat picture. So that's how it's shown on maps using colours. They are also um, shown on with things called contour lines. Now, this here is a little picture from an actual map and it's a bit hard to see because it's really light. But if you have a look, I'll just make it a little bit bigger. We've got lots of different lines. Some of them are really close together. Some of them are further apart. And then we've got some numbers. So we've got 150 here, 350 there, 300, 200. So this is from an actual map that you could get and look at today. So these are called contour lines, okay? And so they're the brown lines that you see on a map. So these lines um, join land that's the same height above sea level. So sort of like um, our colour coding, the lines join. So... Any line, any part of the map that follows on this line, so imagine it goes all, all the way around as well. So any part of the line that joins this is 250 metres above sea level. So it's 250 metres high, okay? The closer the lines are together, the steeper the slope will be. So if you're walking up a hill, if the lines are really close together, say on this bit of the map, they're really close together, 
that means there's going to be a really steep hill because they're close together. It's going to go up really quickly. Whereas where they're more spread apart, it's more of a slower, more gradual um, slope. On most maps, the lines are marked at five or 10 meters. So you'd have, um, so here we've got um, 250 as the bold one. The next one is 300, but we've also got these ones in the middle. So these are in 10, so 250, 260, 70, 80, 90, and then we get to 300. So th on this map, they are 10 meters apart. So this just tells you, again, it uses the lines to do with the color coding to match up how high the ground is rather than having odd numbers everywhere because if we look on the flat version of the map i know that if i walk anywhere from here so if i'm walking up there's a mountain and i get to here i'm at 100 meters and then it's going to get the lines are quite spaced apart so it's like a gradual slope and you can sort of see that here and we're going to get to 300 at the the top so those are called contour lines which show you how steep the hills and things are so a little task for you to have a go at to get your brain working so we've got six um examples of contour lines and six versions of what the hill would look like in real life so remember the closer together the lines are the steeper the hill so what i want you to do is pause the video and have a go at matching them up to the correct um, shape. So if we've got this one here, we've got a sort of figure eight shape. So which of these mountains is going to match that? They're sort of pretty similar on the um, side. So have a think. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, let's see. So we should have got ooh, picture number one. So the contour lines on number one is showing you the um, hill of B. So we've got this bit, the lines are really close together, so we've got a steep hill, whereas on this side, we have still got a hill, because we can see it here, but it's uh, less steep because it's spaced out. So you can see this, so this is the less steep hill, and this is the um, steeper bit. Then we've got two matches E, which is shown from the really close um circles contour lines in the middle which means that it builds gradually up to this big point here it's like a bit of a splodge uh number three matches d so we've got two um hills either side with a little dip in the middle and the hills are the circles and the lines are quite big quite wide which is where we've got this wide um shape there then we've got four matches C, because if you can look at the lines, all the lines are close together on the left side of it and really far apart on the right side. So that gives us this big slope here. Then we've got five gives us F, which is a bit the opposite of uh, four, really, because the lines are closer together on the right side with less on the left, but they're more spaced out than um, picture C. So that means the hill is less steep. So this is why we've got quite a flat hill here. So that must mean six matches with A, which shows us that the circles are really round. There's a bigger gap in the middle, um, which is that big dip here. So give yourself a mark out of six for which ones you managed to match up correctly. Okay, now, so your task today, I'll just, ooh, Maybe I'll move myself. Okay, so you are going to have a blank map of the UK. Now there's one uploaded onto the website. If you don't have a printer, do not worry because I've also linked a YouTube video on a tutorial of how to quickly draw the outline of the UK. Don't worry if it's not 100% perfect as long as you have got the main shape of it if you don't have access to a printer. If you think you can draw it freehand um, as a challenge thing, give it a go really. So on your map of the UK, you're going to do all of these things. So you're going to label the countries and the seas first of all. You're going to shade it, um, showing areas of high ground like the map we saw at the very beginning. And then I want you to name and locate these mountains. So like we did with the mountain ranges of the world, you're going to locate the mountain ranges of the UK. And then a final challenge, can you use the iPads to find any other facts? 
So I would pause the video, leave this up so you know what you're doing and be sure to 